and welcome to the sixth part of this little series about uh, building applications with C++ using Qt and Boost. That is already why I have the form editor of the Qt creator in the background. And what you see is the uh, panel for the page. So this page form is supposed to display two things. Um, the page attributes, but then also this list of elements which is supposed to be displayed in this area. And here's like a button for adding, for deleting, and something for you know, importing, exporting maybe. And this is just a prototype currently, and I would like to replace this with its own widget because this is a widget which I will need in on a different place later too. And also what I don't like is that this is uh, separated by 50-50 here. I'd much like, like one third this and two thirds this. This would be much better looking in my opinion. And to achieve that, I have to go in the layout, which the layout stretch is like uh, zero, zero. So that's 50-50. And now I say one comma two. And now already that looks much better. And um, I already have prepared this widget, which is actually a module list, as you see. Looks exactly the same, but only one page. And um, this element is a Q toolbox. And it has one of the, the big disadvantages it's hard. it has. I cannot remove all pages in, in, in this editor. So I have to write boilerplate code to remove this page from the editor, which has been inserted, and then later give it the option to uh, be empty at the start and then have elements added to it. As you see, I already have uh, named the buttons here, and um, I still should add a label for um, actually this combo box, and I will do that. I go back to um, page panel. Let's try to replace this everything here with this new um, item. So I delete this. I'm deleting stuff from. And now I simply have to drag in a Q widget. Until here. Let's promote this uh, Q widget to the actual type, which uh, can be done via promote to, which opens this dialog. Um, the base class is a Q widget, and um, the, the class name is module list, and I actually have to give it the correct um, include, which is widgets slash module list, and um, in order to, to make this working, module list needs to have a constructor which takes just a Q widget pointer as a parent. Um, in order to promote the widget now, I have to click add here, select the entry, um, it should not have a global include, uh, currently it's not used, and if I click promote, now it's used. Um, and if I compile, I should be able to just see that this is now being actually replaced with the widget we just uh, saw. And yeah, yeah, that's that's the widget which has been placed in here now, and this is a normal thing which we saw already here, broken in the other things. So. Um, next week, I think I'm going to focus on getting um, modules a bit more to work and actually explain you what that is. 
and for today I'm going to concentrate a bit more on widgets. Let's close this. Um, as you saw, there is a functionality to um, save or notify other things in the application that something has changed and I want to show you quickly how I implemented that. Um, all line edits I use have an event listener which actually um, fires at the focus out event and then sets the value in the backend. And this works via the event filter class, which is derived from QObject and takes a std function, which has a signature, which is basically the signature of the virtual function, which I have to override to implement this generic. Or it's not generic, you know, it's an event filter, which is uh, just forwarding to a std function object. That's the whole thought about this object and when I use it it's actually in page panel where we can see it um, I either can make a lambda which I reuse for different instantiations or just in this case um, I see if there's a focus out event and then I need to get the uh, actual line edit I need to get Actually, I could use this here, but in this case, I'm just using the, the line edit account. I get the text, I set the text, and um, if, if it's actually uh, empty in the page alias, I also set the text in the, um, in the alias, which is a bit of a different rule. I want to replace certain things. And this is then installed as an event filter via a new event filter. I have to use new year because cute. And I also implemented something else, which is also an event filter. But in this case, I have a filter template. And this filter template basically is a callable, which gets two callables, one to set the value and the other one to get the value. And in this case, it's a QLine edit. And if I follow to filter, you see it's just a normal template um, which gets a getter and a setter object and then just um, also gets the event type which per default is a focus out event. And if that happens, then it just simply connects the setter to the getter and things happen automatically. Um, that way I can automatically um, install filters for the typical event that I just need to um, convert some value from A to B. And that's most, this was most uh, line edits I have the case so that I have no extra rules and I don't need extra uh, a lambda for it. And um, in the letter I have to, to you know, get different uh, functions to retrieve the value from the different controls which exist in Qt as like every control in Qt has a different uh, property name for extracting its value. There's not a global uh, templated or method which you know could be called like um, value that doesn't exist. And this is for this episode already everything I have to say. Um, the next episode is going to be about messaging and signals in Qt and C++. And then I think I'm probably going to look into text editors. So at least two more uh, parts of the series are laid out and I think even more of that are coming. Uh, so far, I think in my, in my internal planning, it's like at least 11 episodes, which are at the total. And so there's at least five more episodes coming, which you can enjoy.